about age one, we all did something pretty amazing. We did two things. We started talking and we started walking. Talking represents our desire to be in relationship with each other. We want to relate to others in our world. And walking represents our desire to be on the move, on the go, and exploring our world surrounding us. Now, it's interesting that these two principles are sometimes in conflict with each other. We find ourselves wanting to come together and wanting to be apart and exploring our world. So how do we resolve these two things? And that's what I mean by cultural agility today. It's the rules that we set up for ourselves in systems that allow us to come together and allow us to be apart. No different than this tree. There are winds of change blowing on us all of the time. We have to find the right places and the right times to plant ourselves in environments where we can be comfortable, we can relate, and we can grow agilely together as a group of people and as individuals. Right? So um, I have another example. Uh, many of us grew up in families where, like in mine in Indiana, dinner time was at 6.15, and I was expected to be there. And if I was there, there was reward. There was good food, and there was good relationship. But if I wasn't there, usually dad in my case, um, sometimes mom, they let me know I wasn't there. So agility is about these systems we put in place so we can be together creating these patterns in our lives so that we can work together as teams and still be agile and moving. So that's the point of what, what we want to talk about. And what I want to do is tell you a story, two separate stories, about an organization. This organization's name is Amerigroup, and they are a Fortune 440 company now that is a health benefits, benefits provider. And they have two families within their corporation, one in Dallas and one in Maryland. And there were just some distinctive differences. We're going to start with Dallas. And um, what happened was, a number of years ago, Con Healy, the director of real estate, visited Dallas. And he knew one thing about Dallas going in. They were very successful. That's a business unit that was delivering results. And when he got there, there was nobody there. <laughs> like, seemingly, the cannon shot idea was what he said. He went back the next day, and there was still nobody there. So he said, I'm curious. I want to find out what's going on in Dallas and make something out of this. So we studied culture. That's where we began looking at how people are behaving. And what we learned, they're very high on the community attributes. What are community? What's community? It's about being together in relationship, leaders as mentors. They rely on each other. They're a strong family unit. Yeah, they're delivering results. Yeah, they have hierarchies and systems. But look where they're going. What they want, they want to keep their community level as high as it is today, off the charts in some estimations. But they want an ability to create new solutions and solve problems for their customers. And they're going to benefit from that. They're going to create solutions together as a unit of people. Well, guess what? We went in second. We looked at how they were using the space. Khan was right. They weren't there. What you get out of this chart is 32% utilization over a week. Number of desks, number of butts and seats. 32%. But there's something going on on Monday, and there's something going on on Thursday. That's dinner time, you guys. Monday was sales. Thursday was the nurses. They knew they had to be in the space. But what happened? Their space didn't support that. <laughs> You're looking at a space on the screen right now of bedrooms. It's full of bedrooms. There's no living rooms in there. <laughs> All they can do is come to their bedrooms and squeeze in and disrupt the 32% who were there through the week. What we gave them was a space full of living rooms, places to come together agilely that supported different types of work, different types of cultural interactions, the guys, these guys were already doing it. So we measured the results. We said, OK, did we get there? And what we found, yay, we got there. OK, orange is where they saw value in their old space by teams. And the top greener button is where they saw value in their new space. These are very high marks in our estimation from doing these types of measurements. They had already developed the cultural agility behaviors. Now they had the space to do it. They were happy. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Maryland. A little bit different. Maryland was just a little bit different in our study. Uh, they were a results-driven culture. Rules, processes, get it, getting it done, delivering results. Not as high in the community. They also wanted the ability to solve problems, to come together as a unit and be innovative in their solutions. But look at how they were using space. It's a little bit different, isn't it? They were there. <laughs> They had grown up over four years, slow, slow time together, short time together. They would found themselves in multiple suites in this one property. And they were showing up at different times. There's no patterns that we could see there. And they re reinforced that in focus groups. 
But living rooms are good, right? The corporation had made a decision. We're bringing people together in new ways. We provided them living spaces to come together in, but what did they miss? <laughs> they were in pain. <laughs> They moved in and they hadn't had these cultural agility systems in place. And when we measured the results for the first time, this is our fourth iteration, by the way, for the first time we had a response that was in the negative direction. One group got less value out of the new space than they did out of the old. When we reviewed this with HR, the HR leader said, well, duh, <laughs> that particular group in the middle called provider relations, they were in a tree house in the backyard. They, this is their new space. They were in a, new, a different space. And they had to come back into the family. And they had to join into the new rules of how they worked together as a group. And they weren't very happy. It didn't work for them because they didn't have the behaviors yet in place, the mobility behaviors that allowed them to work in, in these living room settings. So the lesson, we are all connected in new ways in our world. We're all on the move. We're born this way. That's a flight pattern it's across the US in a year. We move around a lot but we need to be in relationship with each other. And we need to put these behavioral systems in place as we introduce mobile strategies to our organizations. So the future, what's it about? It's about work is gonna to continue to change and we need to be aware of how this change affects the adult human brain. It's hard for adults to change their behaviors. Doesn't mean we can't. Some of us are doing it one way, some of us are doing it the other. But we need to be cognizant of the fact that we all need to work slowly through change. Thank you. Thank you.